now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. You moved over the void and spoke. And filled the space in emptiness. The dark gave way and light came in. Spoke the word and all began. You said, you said, you said. In the beginning, God, you said, created the heavens and the earth. And He said, and God said, let us make man in our image. You spoke in magic, His first breath, and Adam came forth. With the breath of God. You, you said, said living like rose from death. Rose from nothing into something. You said. You he said, said. You said. He said. You said. You said. You said. Said I will be with you. I'll never leave you. Through the fire protect you. When you walk through the waters, they shall not overflow you. I know what you are going through. You have a priest that can be touched with your infirmities. But know that I am with you. Oh, you are mine, beloved. You said, you said, you said. Really want more of you. That he gave his only begotten son. You said my name. He knows your name. And call me your own. And he calls you to himself. I know I'm not alone. Oh, beloved, you are not alone. You said my name. He knows your name. And call me your own. And he calls you to himself. I know I'm not alone. Oh, beloved, you are not alone. For when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. You said, I will be with you. You said, you said, you said, you said, there is no better assurance than to know that God is with you. Now, you don't have to believe it. You may not. And you may never have been told that. You may not have heard it. But it doesn't change the fact that God is and God said. Because, beloved, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Before you ever were or thought God was and God is. Forty-four years ago, I preached a sermon in the capital of the United States of America. And those of you who are hearing this message today around the world 
a message 44 years ago by a 14-year-old servant of the Lord. And of all the people that gathered to hear that message that day, I felt I was in the presence of only one. Yehovah. Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord God and our Messiah. For the Spirit of the Lord was upon me that day to preach the gospel, to bring the good tidings and the good message and the warning. And 44 years later, I'm preaching that message again today to you, to me, to the world. I remember I could not quite reach the podium, so they put up a board box for me to stand on. And imagine being 14 years old in front of thousands of people, 14 years old in front of anybody, one person. But when the anointing of the Lord is upon you, as David said, by God, I am able to run through a troop and leap over a wall. Now, in my flesh and in my nature, in my natural humanity, trepidation, timidity, fear, uneasiness, butterflies. But the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. And I remember standing up there, and the first thing that God gave me was this. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above visions of mercy. Bursting in love, for this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior. Oh, the day long, this is my story, yes it is, this is my song, praising my Savior 
all the day long. Would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 25? At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy, fell asleep. And at midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom. Now we sing, here comes the bride, but that ain't right. That's not right. The weddings in our Western world aren't right. They're not biblical. They're not Christian. It is never, here comes the bride. But here comes a bridegroom. Come out. Come out to meet him. We used to sing a song in those southern black churches. Before we started the service, the deacons and the mothers on the front row. You hear that tap and they start singing. You have oil in your vessel and your lamp trimmed and burning. You be ready when the bride, bridegroom comes. You have oil in your vessel and your lamp trimmed and burning. You be ready when the bridegroom comes. Well, I would not be, be a sin. And I tell you the reason, reason why I'm afraid, my Lord, he will call on me. And I would be ready to die. So you've got to have that oil in that vessel. You've got to be ready and prepared for your know not the hour. The groom is coming. And in that Jewish tradition, the bride with her chambermaids, they had to be ready for the wedding. They waited in that tent, but they never knew the hour. Usually an hour that they were not expecting. Usually at night. <laughs> Hallelujah! He cometh at night! You think it's at the dawn of the day, but at the night when no man is thinking. You'll find out if you're ready and prepared. In the night! You ain't going to be able to trust on the light in the celestial heavens. It's got to be the light within. The anointing of that Holy Spirit, that Shekinah glory. You know, not the night. The time of that night. But at midnight! Hallelujah! David said, weeping may, for night joy cometh in the morning. In your darkest hour is your brightest day. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God while they were chained up, broken, wounded, somewhat oppressed 
and maybe a little depressed. But they never stop holding on to God's unchanging hand. Mahalia Jackson got so many blacks through the civil rights movement with that song. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. You got to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand, you gotta lean on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. See, God's hand is not too short that it cannot save, his ear too heavy that it cannot hear, his eye too far that it cannot see. His eyes go to and fro throughout the earth. He knows you. He knows me. Come out to meet him. Here comes the groom. Here comes the groom. You want to be wise, not in your own eyes. For it is not the wisdom of men, but the wisdom of God that causes the soul to rise. And it's the wisdom of men that will cause your soul's demise. It is wise in the eyes of God. It isn't your view of you, but his view of you. But the foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. Clouds without rain said a lot and said nothing. Shiny on the inside, but dead on the, shiny on the outside, but dead on the inside. Not everything that glitter is gold. You've got to have this oil on the inside. For it is the anointing of the Lord that breaks that yoke of bondage. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. See, this thing isn't about your mother, your brother, your sister. It's about you. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. We can point our fingers all day long at who is it, who's not, who wasn't, who doesn't, who don't, who didn't. But at the end of the day, you stand alone before a just God. He's your judge. You will have to give an account for your oil, not mine. An account for what you did with what he gave you, not mine. No, the wise replied. Lest there's not enough. For both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Every man must work out his own soul salvation. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, on their way, when it's too late, Colonel Sanders, founder of KFC, at 60, Six years old, 66, 67, when the Florida Transportation Department went through his restaurant located at the turnpike at 25 and he had to shut it down. It was the beginning of the next stage of his life. He began his ministry for Christ at 77, devoted his wealth when he made a contract with Canada for his franchise to give that money, not to the IRS, 
but to the J.E.S.U.S. And millions raised for charity through the Salvation Army, helping the poor and the needy and the undereducated. Use his wealth to preach the gospel in the South. Colonel Sanders, KFC. The first chicken little became chicken big for God. But what he said that struck me most with so many other 77-year-olds that don't know Christ. You know how many old people are headed to hell? More than you think. You think you're old and you've learned something stubborn, hard-hearted, rebellious, stiff-necked, grumbling, complaining, heart and mind set like flint. Ground too hard to break, too set, too rotted out at the roots. But this man gave his life to Christ. You see, most of you aren't going to make it. Because here comes the bridegroom. Too late to buy oil. Too late to go to the church now. And while they were on their way, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in. The virgins who were ready went in. The virgins who were ready went in. These are they whose garments were washed in the blood of the Lamb. They did not soil themselves with the contamination and toxicity of the world of the Sodomites, of Babylon, a pollution of immorality of arrogance. Those who sell their oil and buy some for yourselves, they said. And as they went on that journey, the virgins who were ready, are you ready? Went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Some of you think you've got another day. You don't. Before the end of this podcast, before the end of this message, before the end of this sermon and this song, you're going to be dead. Maybe in the middle of it. Maybe before it even started. Maybe at the end of it. Maybe not soon thereafter. At some point we die. And you will come at the end of your rope, which will be the end of your hope if you don't repent now and say, it's me, oh, it's me, oh, Lord, in need of prayer. You've turned to everything but God, your drugs, your sex, your music, your politics, but you put him on the back burner, which puts you on an eternal burner, absent from God. Hell is fueled by an eternal oil that never goes out. Your apathy, your lethargy. The virgins went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. You had your time, but will your time be up before you repent? Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, Open the door for us. 120 years Noah preached. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. They called him a fool. They mocked him, laughed at him, much like the progressives and the liberals do today in America against the conservatives and those that fight for life, those that fight for right, those that fight for the light of God. They laugh at you. As my one friend once said, the first liberal was the snake at the tree trying to tell you to turn from God, that he's got the answer. Open up! He hammered, he hammered, he hammered with his wife, with his sons. He hammered his daughter-in-laws. He hammered, mock me, call me names, tell me I'm an old fool, tell me there is no God, tell me this is a joke. 
Tell me I'm insane. And he hammered, 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 and then the rain came. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. You better get ready. Better bear this in mind. God showed Noah a rainbow sign. Won't be water, but fire next time. Oh, it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. You better get ready. Better bear this in mind. God show Noah a rainbow sign. It won't be water, but fire next time. Get ready! It rained. They stormed that ark, begging and begging, pushing and shoving, bumbling, brooding and brooding. But you see, they weren't ready! Didn't have the oil in their vessel. And the lamb trimmed and burning. Didn't believe the message for 120 years. Get ready! A drought of your faith. A drought of your faith. A drought of your faith. But is it really a drought of faith? Because you have faith. You've just been putting it in anything but the right thing. So you reap what you sow. He gave you mercy for 120 years. Open the door. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Many of you say, Lord, Lord, you go to church on Sunday, you wear a cross or a kippah or a talit or a hajib. You've got prayer chains and prayer rosaries and prayer every kind of thing you can think of. You fed the sick, clothed them. You adopted dogs. You built houses. You did all kinds of charity. You did it by your works, but not by your faith. It wasn't the obedience of obeying every law in the 613 in the Torah. It's the faith of God. It's not how much money you gave or donated. It's your faith in God. It won't matter that your daddy was a pastor, a priest, a pope, or a pimp. It's your faith in God. But I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know the day or the hour that the bridegroom comes. Get ready! Be ready! He's coming. And not because you doubt it. And not because you believe it. And not because you read it. And not because you know it. Because he's coming. It ain't up to you. It's up to him. He's not a figment of your imagination. You're a figment of his. He brought you out of nothing into something. From dust into flesh. From wind into spirit. Repent! Repent! This is the day of the Lord. Repent! And be wise. And not in your own eyes. And you will know what he said. What he said. Come on. What he said. Lord, my soul is thirsting. And I need a fresh touch. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Harden not your hearts. Turn while there is light. For in the night no man cometh. Amen. Heavenly Father, it isn't your anger nor your judgment that draws the men to you. 
For with loving kindness do I draw them. May they be drawn to you. Not because they understand you. They definitely don't know you. But because they know they need something other than what they have been holding on to. That their hope should be built on nothing less than Jesus Christ's righteousness. May those who hear this message today simply repent. Stop their mental capitulations of doubt and argument, disbelief and rebellion, and simply repent. Call on the name of the Lord. He will hear you. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean. On Jesus' name, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now, just now, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now. What will he do when you come to him? He will save you. He will what? He will save you. He will what? He will save Yes, he will. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. So come on, let's come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Him. Come to Jesus. Come to Him. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus.